Hello Cancer and welcome to your monthly horoscope for May for the Sun or the Ascendant. Now I'm going to give you a broad overview of what to expect but please stay with me. I will then dive deep to give you in detail each of the key influences and timings that impact on your sign in particular. And what I can tell you about this month is prepare yourself for success. Because whatever goals and ambitions that you've been slowly but surely working towards in recent months have an amazing opportunity to manifest themselves for you this month. And that's because Venus, Jupiter, the planet of growth, Venus, the planet of relating, but also money, and Mars, the planet of passion and the need for recognition, they're all going to be moving into your 10th house. 10th house is a very Capricornian energy, but they're being hosted by the fiery Aries, which is very much about thrust. It's about getting things done. And right from the get-go of this month, there is an opportunity for you to use your skills of relating, of management, of ordering uh, your resources in a way to bring you results in a really impressive way. So truly, truly exciting. Now, if you are new to my channel, I'd be delighted if you would subscribe. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Every time I release a video, you will get an alert from YouTube. But also, if you would like to ascend above a zodiac a, a horoscope and understand uh, your situation based on your natal data of time, date and place of birth, you can take advantage of my special offer. It's a year's forecast, a character analysis and 30% off. No two reports are the same. Please see the link below and gain searing insights to your prospects in the time to come. And finally, if you would like to get your free written daily horoscope fired to your device each morning, please see the link below. So Cancer, your May forecast begins with the vibrancy of the solar eclipse which occurred on the last day of April, burning into your situation in terms of your highest hopes, the 11th house. This is where we connect with others. This is where we have our dreams. And this particular event was also embracing the innovative, but also rebellious energies of Uranus. So Uranus is asking you to really reach for the stars. This is much more aspirational stuff. But this solar eclipse provides a backdrop of energy for you for the next six months. But it is asking you to break free of anything which is holding you back from really reaching towards your true potential. Also, as this month begins, there is a gorgeous link between Pluto in your sector of relating and Jupiter, the planet of growth, in your sector of expansion. So some kind of alliance or uh, partnership or uh, independent way of working but collectively with someone else closely can really be very helpful to you right at the start of this month. But of course, Mercury is in shadow as we enter May. And the implications for you about this is that it is in your 12th house initially, and then it goes into retrograde on the 10th in this area. But by the 24th, it's returned to your sector of highest hopes. So, the one thing that you must try to avoid doing this month is sabotaging your prospects through letting any kind of subconscious fears really start to manifest in your thinking. So if you do feel that some people are not entirely supportive of your situation or some information is not really being shared in a particularly open or transparent way, try to keep the faith because there's so much good stuff for you this month to counter the potential for those self-doubts or for those concerns that hopefully you can overcome uh, the energy of Mercury's uh, retrograde, which begins in earnest on the 10th. But on the 2nd, Venus, the planet of relating, 
but as I mentioned before, of money, that's linking or moving into the sign of Aries. Now, technically, it's in detriment in this sign, but I think for you, what this is going to do is give you a lot more desire, a desire to uh, make those goals happen. And if that means cultivating people in positions of influence, that's what you will need to do. There is a bit of a cautionary note from the 24th to the 28th, just saying that not to try too hard around uh, relationships of a professional kind, particularly. But on the 10th, not only does Mercury go retrograde, Jupiter moves into Aries. Now, the fire of Aries is going to really give a lot of impetus and drive to the go-getting energies of Jupiter, which is the planet of fortune. So you have a really glorious opportunity here to show maximum self-belief in what you're trying to achieve. Now, the sun does square up with Saturn at the heart of this month, from the 12th through to about the 16th. Saturn's in the part of your horoscope to do with shared finances. And because the sun's in your 11th house of idealism and the moon is in the 5th house of your individual needs, balancing what you want with your highest hopes and perhaps the financial reality may be a little bit of a juggle. And indeed, once the sun moves on the 21st into your uh, 12th house, you may want to pause a little bit just to double check that everything is heading in the direction you want. But with Mars joining with Jupiter and Venus on the 24th, but going into a conjunction with Jupiter the last week of this month, honestly, this will give you so much drive because you're a cardinal sign. The archetype that we read about in magazines is that you know, cancer people are very caring, they love their home and they love their family. This may be true, but you're a cardinal, you're a leader, and your influence is often rather understated. The way you do things is through relating. You're very conscious of the environment that you're working in. You need to feel comfortable in your associations. And I just feel that the combination of Jupiter and Mars is actually going to bring out the leader side of your nature a lot more stridently. And this could see you pushing outside your comfort zone, despite the fact that the sun does encourage you to get some rest and recuperation once it moves into Gemini on the 21st. But on the 28th, Venus moves into your 11th house. Your connections to others, your friendships, the things that we share in common with people rather than the things that make us different is what you're going to be focusing on for the following 28 days. But then on the 30th, there is a new moon in your 12th house. And if I'm honest, a 12th house new moon is probably one of the uh, trickiest of the year to deal with. This is asking you to be much more in touch with your emotional side, whereas the uh, solar eclipse at the start of the month is very much about a more idealistic energy. It's more about your highest hopes. And perhaps by the 30th, there is going to be the need to integrate those emotional elements of your nature. But you can certainly do that. But in total, this is a month of opportunity for you. So do believe in yourself to the absolute maximum cancer and dazzle people with the full array of your qualities and skills. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Stay safe and goodbye for now. Thank you.